So just tell me, so you got into an argument and then um, the last time you saw her was actually in the house? Yes, okay. Thursday. So she yeah. did, she, and she didn't take a vehicle? No. No one but, saw her leave? Um, no, but on Friday, um, I could still hear her, but I didn't physically see her when I got home. But that's like normal too, because we, you know, we have lots of bedrooms, it's a two-story house, and, you know, we kind of like, well, I give her space. That's a man named Larry Millette. He is the husband of Maya Millette, a young mom who has gone missing. She's got three children, ages seven to 11. They've been married for like 21 years. They were high school sweethearts. Now she is missing, and her husband Larry has spoken to KGTV out in San Diego. I'm gonna play for you the whole interview, all 10 minutes of that interview. But as you listen to it, I want to know your reaction to what the husband is saying. What questions do you have for him? What questions do you have about this case? And what do you think about what Larry Millette is saying and how he is saying it? Once again, his wife, the mother of his three children, his high school sweetheart, Maya, is missing. When did you first notice that May was missing? Uh, Saturday morning. Okay. And tell uh, me. Her parents came by. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, kind of walk me through like the last time you saw her and what was going on. Uh, Thursday, Thursday night, um, you know, like we got into a, a, a kind of an argument. Um, and, and, you know, we've been having, uh, you know, like problems, um, you know, for about a year. We've kind of like been up and down and stuff like that. But after that, you know, I give her space. So just tell me, so you got into an argument and then... Um, the last time you saw her was actually in the house? Yes, okay. Thursday. So she yeah. did, she, and she didn't take a vehicle? No. No one but, saw her leave? Um, no, but on Friday, um, I could still hear her, but I didn't physically see her when I got home. But that's like normal too, because we, you know, we have lots of bedrooms, it's a two-story house, and, you know, we kind of like, well, I give her space. So, but that's why every time someone says um, Thursday, yes, it's physically, you know, or, you know, visually see her. But um, for me, it's uh, Friday, Friday night. You know, I can hear her, like, wrestling around making dinner for herself in another bedroom. And I'm sleeping with the kids in another bedroom. Okay. So, 
upstairs and she's downstairs kind of deal like kind of like a roommate um thing it's mm-hmm. kind of like giving each other space well sure. I, I don't need the space she always wants the space got it so yeah. it was like friday and then you left or went went somewhere and then came back and she wasn't yeah. there right yes okay. uh, i left her with my two girls because they you know they um uh do their homes homeschool mm-hmm. and then i just had my son with me so uh, when i came back she was still there on friday um, we can hear her downstairs, you know, like after I'm done giving the kids baths and feeding them and everything. And um, on Saturday morning, uh, when her parents came came by, uh, her door was locked. Uh, I found the keys to the bedroom and I opened it and she was already gone. So it kind of maybe she went to a morning sunrise hike, you know, because she, w- she didn't go jeeping because that's one of her other hobbies, uh, the jeep group. And, um, you know, she would have taken that. So assumed maybe one of her friends picked her up and, um, you know, they went hiking or wine tasting. She likes to go wine tasting to Mecula. That's mm-hmm. her other thing. Or brunch early morning. Yeah. After that, you know, like at night we're like, okay, she hasn't come home yet. Um, which is sometimes okay. You know, she'd go out maybe for drinks or something. Uh, she usually doesn't drink a lot, but recently she's been, you know, uh, doing that, you know, the latest she would be home at like 2.30 or, you know, 3.30 in the morning. After that, that's kind of like out of the, you know, ordinary. Sure. So um, my sister and I was recommending, hey, you know, maybe uh, we should call the cops now. I was like, well, I'll give her some time. Um, but we uh, initially got to the police report, you know, they're like, hey, you got to check the hospitals first. Mm. So this is like around 12 o'clock at night. And uh, it's like, okay, you know, they start checking the hospitals. Um, uh, 12.30, they finally filed the police report. And I was like, well, you know, maybe give her some time because I'd, I'd call like at 4.30 because, you know, give her some time if it's really, really out of the ordinary. You know, so after that, you know, they started the uh, investigation. Well, you know, three cops came, uh, let them search the house. They looked all the houses, all the cars, you know, and then we'd just been waiting. And then I got uh, the NCIS called me. And then he, you know, he was able to search the house and everything. Uh, my in-laws have been here the whole time. Uh, they start uh, doing the, the neighbors, you know, the cameras and everything, and trying to uh, figure out if when, when when she left. You know, like, they can see it, but they can't really because it was nighttime kind of deal. Uh, we're just basically trying everything and anything trying to trying to find her. Well, Larry, um, Larry, just tell me, how, how worried are you and what do you think happened? Um, Where do you think she is? I wasn't really worried. Um, you know, I was kind of like worried, but, you know, I wasn't like totally worried until the birthday. You know, I was thinking, okay, maybe, you know, like she's just blowing off steam, just like, you know, doing what she told me before where she wants everyone to leave her alone. Because before I used to get her family involved, like, hey, she's not coming home, you know, and then why'd you call my family? You know, I just want everyone to leave me the thing alone. But, you know, I was like, okay, this time I think she stepped up her game. You know, like, she's blocking everyone. But now that, you know, she missed our daughter's birthday, and, like, with all this pressure with the media and everything, um, there's something keeping her from contacting us. So um, my sister-in-law is, you know, I don't really try to think about that stuff because it's, like, mind-numbing, but I'm trying to stay positive. But, you know, when people are telling me, hey, you know, maybe she got into an accident while she's hiking, you know, and she can't get her phone, like, well her phone would be right next to her, you know what I mean? Like, she wears Fabletics, so it would be in her pocket. So, worst case scenario, I don't know what what's keeping her from, you know, contacting anyone, but this pressure should be enough pressure to say, hey, you guys, you know, I'm okay. Right. So, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to think, but, mm-hmm. you know, I'm still trying to, you know, keep my head up, trying to say, hey, you know, keep positive and say, I'm hoping, you know, like, she'd just come home. You know, even though this, this whole situation is embarrassing. I don't know what, what to think, but the, the longer it's going, the more, like, surreal it gets because, you know, what they say is, like, the first 48, 72 hours is the most critical. You know, I've seen mm-hmm. enough uh, movies and, you know, documentaries about this kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the worst-case scenario is basically, you know, something's happened, like, very terrible, you know what I mean? Right. So. Right. I mean, how how worried are you? Do you think there's still a chance that she could voluntarily have left and she just needs time? How worried are you? Um, that's what I'm hoping for. 
and this is like really the like whoa you know come on why do you have to do this the whole thing but I'm I'm really worried and shaken but again like most of the time it's just numbing mm-hmm. like you know surreal kind of deal I'm just worried about her and you know trying to keep things normal with the kids because I, I know they don't show it but you know it's really affecting them so when she didn't surface for your daughter's birthday that was yeah, really that's, unlike that her was the pinnacle. yeah that was like a gut-wrenching feeling and can you know you break down a little bit it's like well you know she would never ever not even say hey honey you know happy birthday kind of so and they they've yeah. and your 11 year old's old enough has she asked like are they asking yes yeah, she, she's asking um but she's kind of like me you know keep keep yourself in the shell don't really want to you know open up how many so, times has she left before and how long has it been um, in the past, like, before, she would just, like, stay at the park or park somewhere or go, like, in the parking lot, um, and the, uh, you know, that's years back, even, even this past year, you know, she just stay away. Um, uh, this year, she'd, like, you know, like, go out, um, drink with friends or stay at a friend's house, you know, and try to sleep it off. Uh, months, couple months, um, she's been, you know, like, wanting her space, so she'll go out with family two places and she'll just go out for days and stuff like that but at least i know where she's at so how how you know? when she when she's gone right so but when she has left how long what is the longest she's been gone for uh, like maybe a day for like till two thirty or three o'clock in the morning kind of deal so never never more than a day or, or two. Oh yeah never more than a day okay never more than a day yeah. and then you always yeah. kind of knew where she was at okay you know not more than a day okay basically or the next day You know, again, I always tell her, we have three kids, you know, you can't be doing this kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, she would never be that irresponsible not to say, hey, I'm okay. Was there anybody that wanted to hurt her? Was there any other guy, I hate to ask, but, you know. Um, You know, like, I don't know. Uh, I told the police, you know, she really likes hiking. Okay. Um, You know, wine tasting, so Temecula and stuff like that. But I don't know what else to think, like, who would, you know, kidnap her or... Would she go hiking by herself? Um, she has, yes, but that's the ones like close to the house. We have a hiking trail in San Miguel Park or San Miguel right here. That's the only time she would go by herself. And yes, she has before in the beginning. Um, but she would take her car, so right. she would go to the one. I don't know the the Santee one or the one in the Mesa. I f- I forgot. There's a mountain there. Yeah. Um, but you know, yes those ones she would go by so but most of the time she would go with hiking moments uh, with Shane and then um you know she's like one of the leaders and then everyone else is like whoever shows up shows up to that group so she was and a pretty says, experienced hiker um not experienced uh, she was training for um this hike that we me and her tried when like 10 years ago before we had kids mm-hmm. um down the Colorado River and um the Grand Canyon mm-hmm. anyway it takes about a day yeah. To go down there. So she's been hiking and hiking. It's kind of a stress release. Mm-hmm. And uh, she wanted to do this, um, like, a s- seven hiking trail, like, you know, Twin Sisters, Devil's Peak, or Potato Chip Rock, and all the ones that she keeps mentioning. And I was like, well. But, so, but she would have taken her car, like, or there would have been a friend. It, or Yes, exactly. If she didn't have her car, a friend would have to pick her up. Okay. So that's. That's the only reason why I was like, maybe she's wine tasting or uh, hiking with a friend because yeah. she's not jeeping because her car's here. Right. You know, so, she has uh, her own vehicle and she has a jeep. Like she yeah. specifically goes for jeep groups. So what has this been like, Larry, just emotionally for you? I know you said you're kind of just numb and you're trying to take care of three <laughs> children, but I yeah. mean, how are you um, doing emotionally with this? I mean, this is... Trust me, I've been emotionally, physically, mentally drained. Um, it's no sleep, uh, not eating. Um, you know, just my face look like it just aged. Like I don't know, but you know, the main thing is I can't really think straight. 